In the last video, we talked about how you can do some basic SQL transformations directly in Fivetran. But we also mentioned that there's the ability to connect directly with DBT and handle some DBT transformations. On one hand, you have Fivetran, which is one of the best at the extract and load process. And then on the other, you have DBT, which in my opinion is the best tool out there for the transformation components. And now you can use both of them together pretty seamlessly. This is where we left off in the last video. We created a basic SQL transformation, but this time, like we said, we want to use DBT. And one of the caveats here is you can't do both. So let's select enable DBT. And like it says, download and delete your transformations. If you do need to hang on to those for some other reason, let's acknowledge that and continue to set up. Zip file delivered. Okay, thank you. All right, so here is the setup for the DBT transformations. There is a lot of really good documentation on this and I'll walk through what you need to do, but I also encourage you to go ahead and read some of that if you get tripped up at all or have some further questions on uh, how this works. First thing we need to do is use this public key to grant Fivetran access to your repository. All right, so we need to copy this public key, go over to your GitHub repository, and I'll call out if you're using a different tool for Git, maybe it's GitLab or Bitbucket or something. There are instructions as well for how you would do that. But in this case, we're using GitHub. So uh, that's what we'll show. And you'll likely need to be the owner of the repository, but we'll go to settings. And under deploy keys, we will add a deploy key. That's where this SSH will go. You can give it a title. We'll call this five tran and drop that in there. In this scenario, we don't need write access. All we need it to do is read our DBT logic. So that's all we need. Go ahead and add that key. And here we can see now we have the deploy key ready to go. Okay, step one complete. Next, what is the repository URL? And it's that Git URL, which if we go to code and clone, it's this URL right here. Ends with dot git copy this and put it in here. And this now brings us to probably the most important step, which is you need to add a specific file that Fivetran can read to understand one, when do you want to run your transformations and what schedule similar to the last video we talked about? And two, what DBT command do we want to run? Because DBT, if you're not familiar, is a command line tool. So in order for it to run, you need to provide some sort of command for it to run, to know which models you want to run, um, et cetera. So we already have dbtproject.yaml, and now we need to add deployment.yaml. But what is that? Scroll over here, we can see there's some more information. Go to step five. Here, it's going to give you a sample file that you can download. And we'll need to put this at the same root, the same level as dbt project. We have to make sure they're on the same level. I'm gonna click this. So I've gone ahead and opened this in Visual Studio Code. There's a lot of commentary around this, which is really helpful, but I think sometimes can make it seem a little more overwhelming than it actually is. First step here, which DBT version do we want to run on? And if you don't specify it, it's gonna use 18. There's some prerequisites here. In my case, at the time of this video, we'll use 0.21. And next are jobs. And this will start to feel a little similar to GitHub Actions, if you're familiar with that. It's essentially just configuring a YAML file to do what you want. Within jobs, we have various jobs. So in this case, we have one, two, three, four jobs. And each job, we can give some more information. So we have the name of the job, the DBT target. I'm making some assumptions here that you're familiar with some of the fundamentals of DBT. So this will be your target name. In this case, maybe dev, maybe you want production, whatever target you've created in your profiles.yaml. Schedule. Now the schedule here will look a little different. This is what's called a cron job schedule. And they have a link here. And I, this is one I've used before too, and it's really helpful. Essentially, this is a way to create custom schedules. So take this here, for example, it will tell you, okay, this is going to run at 12 o'clock and you can click next. And every day at 12 o'clock, this will run. Here's another example just to show you. And what's great about this site is it'll tell it to you in plain English. So at 7.30, 
every day of the week from Monday through Friday, this will run. And that's based on what you put here. One call out on the cron information here is if you're going to do every something like this where you want it every 30 minutes or every couple minutes, you'll have to do a division sign. And because of that, you need to wrap this in quotes. As it says here, the string is quoted because otherwise it will be treated as invalid. So that's a quick call out here. Okay, so we have name, target, schedule in the cron jobs, and then steps. And steps here are the DBT steps, the DBT commands that you want to run. So the first step, we're calling it run models and the command DBT run. Once that completes, it'll do, we're calling a second step, calling it test models, and that command is DBT test. And as we can see down here, this command is whatever DBT command you want it to be. Get as specific or complicated as you want, just as you would do regularly using DBT, however you run it. So let's go ahead and just get rid of some of this stuff here and clean it up. See, now to me, this looks less intimidating. There's less words going on. And what I will do is rather than running every single job, because I want to test this, we'll just do one. And I'll show you if we go to my DBT project, I'll just run one of these. So I'll run this model right here. So we'll do DBT run dash M and the staging model right here. And we'll do the same for test. Again, this is just because I want to test this. I don't want us to run my entire project, just the one. Okay, this file, I actually still have this in my downloads file. So I need to put this in my DBT project, which I here is called training full for now. And what I'll do is add a new file, call this deployment.yaml. And I'm going to copy this over here. You could have downloaded it and opened it directly here, but that's not what I did. So we'll move on with this, save, open a terminal, and I'm going to add this file. So typically you wouldn't push directly to main like this, but it's a demo, so we're doing it. And so let's go back now, and we can see it already here 25 seconds ago. Deployment.yaml is here, and most importantly, it's on the same level as the dbt project.yaml. Moving along. So now we have this stuff done. The default schema, in my case here, I'm going to do dbt mcon. Now this cannot be changed once you update it, so make sure you set it the way you want. Credentials here is also an important point because in the first option here is use that same user, that same role for this. That's, a, that's assuming they have the exact same permissions and those permissions are adequate. In my case, that's not the case. I wanna use a different user and a different role for the DBT component. So I'll use dedicated credentials and we'll have to update this here. All right, so the host, this is interpreting it from the connection that I set up previously in, on Fivetran, same with the port. So warehouse, use this one. We'll use this database. The user in my case is this MCON12345. Then the role is DBT training 001, as we see here. Auth, do you want to use a key pair or password? And paste that in there. Next, we have advanced options. And here we want to indicate which branch do you want Git to pull to actually get our DBT project. And for me, it's not called master, it's called main project path where your DBT project lives. If you happen to nest your project within another directory, you'd have to give that path here. But for me, that project is on the root level, so I don't need to put anything there. Uh, and then threads are how many threads do you want to run in parallel? So you could bump that up if you want, but also remember that the higher you go, the more bandwidth it's going to take of your particular warehouse at a given time. For me, I'm not, I'm just doing one model. So one thread is fine. Save and test. Now it's validating the credentials. Okay, all connections passed. Let's go to transformations now. It's reading that deployment.yaml and it's going to list here those jobs that we created and also be connected so that when we do run it, it can just run seamlessly from DBT. So now this took a couple seconds here, but I refreshed and here we can see DBT transformations daily and nightly. And that matches with what we've created in our deployment.yaml file. If we go to configure, we can go back and update this. 
and it's letting us know that these have been that the jobs have been imported but we're not going to actually start running anything until you activate it so let's let's do that activate but what i want to do is run this one time to show what happened here so we can see this is on a schedule it's going to trigger at noon tomorrow at this point but what we can also do for now is just run now so let's do that now we would expect this to run two steps one our dbt run and then our dbt test and here we can see there's a record now of the start time this is my current time and it's running we can click on this get some run details and we can see run is in progress now i refreshed again and we can see here it it ran it failed it failed a test but let's look at what actually happened here it gave us the time that it ran how long it took we have step one which is run models which matches this and here's the command that was run and then test models and if we open this up we see this terminal like output here which is nice you can see uh, this one ran it was successful so you can quickly go in and audit what's going on and then for the tests it ran a bunch of tests and it looks like one of them failed for some reason i'll have to check that out but this is all good we can see that it ran both steps it failed and we got an alert because the job failed so now we can see what the issue was link directly to it see the details and it'll bring this all back up for us in my opinion this is a really great collaboration for the analytics community between two companies that are doing two obviously really critical parts of a data pipeline and now you can handle both of them directly in the same place so thanks again for watching and we'll see you at the next video